Darren M. M. McMahon, Happiness, A History Welcome to the exciting journey of, Happiness, A History, by Darren M. M. McMahon. This summary will provide you with a well-rounded understanding of the book, focusing on the key themes and interesting aspects of the history of water and its impact on human societies. Throughout this summary, you will discover how our relationship with water has evolved over time and how it has shaped our world today. The impressive ancient Roman aqueducts, water's link to diseases, the struggle to access clean water, and the rise of bottled water all play a pivotal role in this fascinating history. Dive in and quench your thirst for knowledge with this engaging and informative summary. The Roman Empire's Influence on Water Politics The Romans were the first to introduce water into private homes and give free water to their citizens. Their greatest achievement was constructing aqueducts over 2,000 years ago that still stand today. To have water flowing into their homes, citizens paid a tax and had a pipe installed to connect to the aqueduct. The introduction of aqueducts was mainly to supply bathhouses but the third aqueduct was built to provide drinking water. Under Augustus, the Roman Empire transformed, and water was used to demonstrate the citizens' better life under the empire. Augustus increased the number of public water stations elaborately decorated with the words, Aqua Nomini Caesaris, located every 150 feet within the city. The Role of Clean Water in Ancient and Modern Societies the lack of knowledge about clean water caused many deaths in ancient societies, particularly crowded urban areas. It was only in the mid-19th century, through the work of advocates such as London physician John Snow, that people began to realize the crucial role of clean drinking water. Snow's discovery of the link between a polluted water supply and a cholera outbreak was a turning point in the history of public health. Once the importance of proper drainage and cleanliness was recognized, effective sewer systems and clean water supplies were implemented, doubling life expectancies. People in ancient societies preferred beer and wine over water because they sometimes got very sick when drinking H2O. This lack of knowledge about clean water resulted in awful living conditions in crowded urban areas like New York City. In 1748, New York City's drinking water was so badly polluted that a journalist proclaimed, horses from out of town wouldn't drink it. Despite the polluted water, people continued to drink it until a clean and safe public water system was introduced. As a result of these delays, many people died in yellow fever and cholera epidemics, like during the wave of disease that claimed 3,500 lives in 1832. London physician John Snow was an early advocate for clean water and is credited with inventing the field of epidemiology. He used medical records, a map, and surveys to determine that the 1854 cholera outbreak in London was linked to a water pump on Broad Street. Snow found a dirty diaper near the water supply, which became the first ever hard evidence that polluted water caused cholera. Once the importance of proper drainage and cleanliness was recognized, cities began to roll out effective sewer systems and increase the supply of clean water. It was only in the mid-19th century that people began to grasp the importance of clean drinking water. Before that, it was commonly held that diseases like cholera were caused by pathogens in the air, although crowded streets were increasingly flooded with dirty industrial runoff. The role of proper drainage, cleanliness, and clean drinking water became widely recognized, leading to effective sewer systems and clean water supplies that doubled life expectancies. A Tale of Two Cities' Water Woes New York City and London experienced challenges and health risks in sourcing clean drinking water around the turn of the 20th century. In New York, the initial project at Couch Hook was a failure, leading to the installation of a new water system from Croton and eventually the Catskills. Similarly, London's Thames River was heavily polluted, causing the infamous Great Stink of 1858. It took the efforts of John Snow and lawyer Edwin Chadwick to convince the government to stop sewage dumping into the Thames, ultimately leading to improved water quality. The Complexity of Clean Water Sourcing clean water is not an easy task, and treating it is only the beginning. Freshwater sources are generally dirty, with wildlife excrement, bacteria, 
and dangerous levels of endocrine disruptors. Humans are partially to blame, with common medications and personal care products contaminating water sources. Though there are increasingly effective ways of treating water, a recent study suggests pharmaceuticals and their byproducts still remain in treated water supplied to millions of citizens. The vulnerability of our water supply. Batman's scarecrow may not be fictional after all. The lack of protection measures for water systems in the United States makes them highly susceptible to contamination and vulnerable to external threats. A broken into water tower costs a community $40,000 and a tragedy in Missouri resulting from bird waste in the water supply claimed seven lives. While water is tested for safety, only 91 of over 60,000 chemicals used in the U.S. are legally considered contaminants. The reliability of the Environmental Protection Agency is also influenced by political leadership and funding. The Rise of Bottled Water Bottled water has exploded in popularity over the past few decades due to three main factors, the fitness boom, convenience, and profitability. Companies like Perrier marketed their product as a healthy alternative to soda, and with a massive budget, sponsored events like the NYC Marathon to bring attention to their brand. Other brands entered the competition, making bottled water more convenient with conveniently sized plastic bottles. Finally, the high markup for bottled water made it a very profitable market. Today, some high-end restaurants even have water sommeliers to assist with selecting the right water to complement a meal based on the water's minerals. The truth about bottled water Bottled water may not be as healthy and sustainable as we believe, despite its widespread popularity. The regulations and monitoring for tap water are stricter than for bottled water. Reports reveal that different brands of bottled water contain harmful substances, such as arsenic and lead. In addition, bottled water has a negative impact on the environment. The plastic bottles require water in their manufacturing and contribute to the growing issue of plastic waste. The article encourages readers to reconsider their consumption of bottled water and opt for tap water instead. The Global Water Crisis In many parts of the world, clean and drinkable water is not readily available. Although access to water was declared a basic human right in 2002, many countries struggle to provide their citizens with it. While some countries recognize basic rights to water, others struggle to build and maintain water systems due to high costs. Even in the United States, pipes that date back to the 1800s continue to be in use today, resulting in a loss of 6 billion gallons of water every day. The idea of privatizing water systems has been suggested in some countries to improve conditions, but not everyone is in agreement. The South African government amended its constitution in 1996 to provide free water up to a certain limit, but collection of payment and faulty pipes became barriers to this system. In short, the global water crisis remains a concerning issue, with much work to be done to ensure access to clean and drinkable water for all. Water Scarcity and Opportunities Our world faces water scarcity, and people are searching for unique ways to address it. The Great Lakes contain one-fifth of the planet's freshwater, and efforts are underway to protect it from exploitation. Meanwhile, there are individuals seeking to profit by claiming icebergs in the North Pole, which are known for having the cleanest water. Researchers suggest that even moving a 7 million ton iceberg from Greenland to the Canary Islands is possible. Other options include desalination, improved treatment centers, and dual water systems. After exploring happiness, a history, it is clear that the intricate relationship between water and humans has always been a crucial aspect of our existence. From the remarkable Roman aqueducts to the horrors of polluted water in urban areas, and the struggle for clean water access in both developing and developed countries, water has continuously shaped societies. The rise of bottled water and the challenges of protecting water sources prove that our relationship with this vital resource still has much room for improvement. The key takeaways from this book are the importance of clean drinking water, the need for better water management and infrastructure, and the significance of water in historical and contemporary contexts. 
Reflecting on this information, we can strive towards a future where water is valued and protected for generations to come.